Bayern Hammer Barcelona, your chance to win an RB Leipzig shirt. It's a record night in the Champions League. Kane could sign a new Spurs deal and a chance to round up all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Froelich, you are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First up, and like we mentioned yesterday, there was a bit of a crisis for Barcelona with all their injuries up front, and that proved to be the case last night in the Champions League as they lost 3 0 at home to Bayern Munich and failed to muster a single shot on target. This is not Barcelona that we're used to. This is not Barcelona to pretty much any football fan who's watched them over the last 20 odd years or so. They didn't manage to shoot on target in the first half for the first time in the Champions League group stage since 2003, 2004. And like I mentioned, finished the game not even testing Manuel Neuer in the Bayern Munich goal. As for the other end of the pitch, while well, Barcelona had a mix of youth and too much experience, it seems, in Gerard Piquet at the back. And when you've got the likes of Lewandowski and Thomas Müller coming at you, it's always going to be difficult. And Bayern Munich were just so good from the way they scored their goals, to the substitutions they made, to the way they controlled the game. It was just always going to be their night. And it is such a disappointing game for Barcelona. Barcelona. They have now lost at home in Europe three times in a row. Not exactly the kind of record that they wanted to achieve last night. As for the goal scorers for Bayern, like I mentioned, Robert Lewandowski grabbed two, which means he now has his 74th and 75th goals in the competition. And he is outright the third highest goal scorer in Champions League history. I just don't think there's any way he's going to be catching the likes of Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo anytime soon. But for the team Bayern, they are now unbeaten in 19 European away games, which is the longest run in the competition's history. On top of this, though, there were reports that a few of the senior members at Barcelona stayed for quite a few hours after the game last night because they were utterly disappointed with what they saw on the pitch. The only saving grace is that a couple of youngsters came on and had some quite good moments, but... That spells a lot more about Barcelona's future than it does about the now. And apparently one of the areas that the club officials were most disappointed in was the fact that Ronald Koeman, despite the fact he was told to switch to a 4-3-3, like the way that Barcelona have always played, went to a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2 or whatever. He was super defensive and still couldn't contain the German champions. I'm not saying that Ronald Koeman is in danger of losing his job, but things are looking rather ominous at the moment. Next up, and you guys can win a giveaway that we've got for you. Thanks to Airbnb Leipzig, you can win their third kick for this season. The inspiration for the jersey is a little bit like Leipzig. Colourful, diverse, creative and crazy. Besides the electro and techno vibes, there's loads of different elements of Leipzig's club culture in the kit and it's 100% recycled polyester fibres that were used for the production of the jersey. The competition runs from today until the 19th of September at midnight. So all you have to do if you're over 18 years old is click the link in the description below and good luck. Anyways, back to the Champions League action from last night and we can't really talk about the Champions League without talking about the top scorer Cristiano Ronaldo because he found the back of the net again on his return to the Champions League with Manchester United but that wasn't the story from the night the story is that they lost I know yesterday we released a video on the Champions League predictions from this season which you can find right here and I thought that she suggested that Manchester United have a chance of winning it but let's all calm down this is just one group stage game talk to me a little bit later on in the season I still think if they can get that team firing and not make too many mistakes they've got a chance but aside from that they did make a massive mistake last night and I really do feel for Jesse Lingard he came on for Ronaldo gave a horrific back pass which gave young boys the chance to win it in the last minute and it was done 2-1 victory to the Swiss side and it's not exactly the greatest start to the campaign for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side. Alongside this though, there were a few more records broken in that game as well as Ronaldo matched Ike Casillas' record of 177 appearances in the Champions League. He'll be sure to break that this season and it just goes along with all of his other records in the Champions League, that being the top goal scorer, the top assister and now no player has scored against more opponents in the European competition than Cristiano Ronaldo. He and Lionel Messi have both scored against 36 different teams. Elsewhere though, and Romelu Lukaku has continued his fine form for Chelsea as they won 1-0 over Zenit. There was an entertaining draw between Villarreal and Atalanta. Juventus got their campaign off to a flyer and there were a couple of nil-nils, but, 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 we absolutely have to talk about Sevilla against Salzburg because there were four penalties in the first half. Yes, you heard me right, four. And like I always say, if the penalties are there to be given, give them. I'm glad there was four. I hate this thing of, oh, it's too early to give a penalty or, oh, you've given two to one side to maybe level it up and give another to this side. No, if you're going to give away ridiculous fouls, then there's going to be penalties. As for the ones for Salzburg, Adi Amy actually became the first player to win three penalties in a game. 
because of course he did. It's such an unusual thing to happen. It's like the record that they're the first away side to have three penalties in the Champions League game. That makes sense. And it's the first time that four penalties have been given in the first half because of course they have. This doesn't happen very often. Anyway, all three of them, in my opinion, were penalties. The first and the third one were ridiculously rash challenges. Like, what are you thinking? The second one, Jesus Navas, it's very, very soft. But again, don't give the referee a decision to make. I'm not going to open this can of worms that we saw with Raheem Sterling in the European finals this summer. But Navas, stop pushing him. Don't even put your hand out. Don't even give the referee something to talk about and then give a penalty. Despite this, though, the real story here has got to be the fact that Salzburg missed two of them. Like they could have gone in 3-0, actually 3-1 at half time. But what an opportunity for them. And they've missed two penalties. So when Sevilla got their penalty at the end of the first half, it was only going to be that Ivan Rakitic slotted it, slotted it sorry, in the corner and they actually finished one all. I just think that's crazy. What an exciting game. Anyway, kudos to the referee for spotting that there were penalties and giving all of them. You can think of many referees who probably wouldn't or probably would have been a little bit intimidated by the home fans, this, that and the other. Anyway, a scintillating game of football, certainly the first half. Next up then, and we move to, well, it's a pretty old school saga from the summer and it's Harry Kane leaving Tottenham, but not this time. No, the latest reports are that Spurs are planning a new contract offer for the England striker. Yes, you've heard me right, a new contract for him. Is he going to sign it? Well, he rejected the chance to apparently sign a new one after England lost the final to Italy in the summer. But this one may be signed because there will be a release clause involved. So much of the talk over the summer of Spurs not letting Harry Kane join Manchester City is because they could not accept the fee that Manchester City were offering. Daniel Levy wanted much more for the player. But, and it's very unusual for Tottenham, should this new deal, this new contract for Harry Kane include a pay rise? Maybe not the 500k a week he was set to earn at Manchester City, but still a fair pay rise and his £200,000 per week at the moment. If it also includes a release clause, he may be a little bit more willing to sign it because then clubs like Manchester City and whoever else wants to buy him in January or next summer will know how much they have to pay. And once they make that offer, it is no longer down to Tottenham to accept it. It is just automatically accepted. Having said that though, I'm still not entirely sure on this one. The contract currently runs until 2024. And even though Harry Kane's going to be 31 by the time that rolls around, you can still see him maybe not forcing the move, but the question's still arising pretty much every transfer window between now and three years' time, even if he doesn't sign that new contract. Finally then, we come to a quick roundup of the rest of the day's transfer news. And Napoli president Aurelio Di Laurentiis has said that he is working on a plan for a similar European Super League to the one we saw fail in April, but this one will have qualification on merit. Please, let's not go down that route again. Let's just leave that one alone. Elsewhere, our lesson for the Yuri Tillemans has said he's keeping his option open amid reports of interest from the likes of Liverpool, Real Madrid, Barcelona and Manchester United. There's good news for Harvey Elliott, who had successful surgery on his ankle. And according to the club, he could play again this season. And lastly, but not least, for those of you who enjoyed last night's Champions League action, tonight may be even better. As yesterday, Mauricio Pochettino, the PSG manager, said that it's a possibility that we could see Neymar Mbappe and Lionel Messi all line up alongside one another in the PSG attack. And honestly, at this point, I'm feeling kind of sorry for the Club Rouge defence. So that's all from me. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out everything else we've got going on. And until next time, I will see you guys later.